Having kids and relationships. Solo album. And I've been putting out mixtapes. Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to um, get my music out in whatever way I can do. Diggable Planets, a trio formed in 1987 featuring Butterfly, Ladybug, and Doodlebug. Want to find the perfect music to smoke to, clean up to, get dressed and ready for the day? Throw on Diggable Planets to hear the golden sound of hip-hop infused with funk, jazz, and soul, look no further. Diggable Planets back in the early 90s were a pure-sounding hip-hop group with effortless rhymes that flowed together between the three of them like water out of faucet. They were the group that played around the clock cause they beat to rap what key beat to lock. That flow is so infectious that it made them stand out among the competitive environment hip-hop was in those times, all while competing against an era of braggadocious and aggressive MCs with their made-for-all-ages lyrics reflecting on the time they were in. That flow also won them a Grammy for the song Rebirth of Slick, better known as Simply Cool Like That. It's one of the best hip-hop songs of the 90s and perfectly displayed the Diggable Planet's effort to make great music instead of the cookie-cutter hits that made the label happy. It was jazzy, funky, underneath a golden on-mic performance from all three members. Of course, no one can forget one of the most well-remembered lines of all time. We, we beat to, to what rap, like key beat, beat to, to lock, what? Cool. Exactly. When they released the album Reachin', a new refutation of time and space, Diggable Planets were seen as a group at the forefront of an image hip-hop was supposed to be. Cool Like That was top 15 on Billboard, their album went gold, and the group were still in a happy place. All things looked bright for the future of hip-hop as long as we had groups like this creating. What I liked most about Diggable Planets were while they certainly had the opportunity to excel in a music industry that at some point began to illuminate and sought after how many albums did you sell or what could make them the most money, they stayed true to the art form of hip-hop and didn't compromise their creative journey just to be the highest selling artist. For them, they were creators through music that respected the listeners and wanted to give us music lasting longer than a hit song of the summer or billboard topping single to propel their sales. In the end, that thinking may have hurt them as music did evolve and a leading element of its evolvement was finding ways to best capitalize financially off the art being put out and only interested in artists willing to play the game. Diggable Planets only released two albums together that were both received well critically, but shortly after the second album, they disbanded and hip-hop was robbed of great music that could have lasted the rest of the 90s. What happened to Diggable Planets? Salute to Ali Shabazz for this request. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. You can also send a super thanks by clicking the button below. Enjoy the video. Diggable Planets was formed in 87 after by chance the members met and formed an almost instant bond centered around their similar interests in what hip hop should sound like. Butterfly and Doodlebug met each other in Philly where Doodlebug is from and Butterfly was interning in nearby New York. At some point, he meets Ladybug, leading to the group organically being formed into the charming, laid-back, slightly militant group we came to know. They signed to Pendulum Records, a subsidiary of Warner, and released their debut album Reachin' in 93 behind the hit crossover single Rebirth of Slick, Cool Like That. The album was critically acclaimed and sold well enough to ensure a second album. Fans weren't aware that album would be their last together. Stunt number one, changing direction. For Diggable Planets, their ingredients to success were simple. Make great intellectual hip-hop music, add effort to selection of their beats with flawless samples and classy instruments that could be performed in any era, and have fun and a peace of mind working the results of the studio sessions, then move on to the next. Their first album had the success it did because at that time, hip-hop was still about producing the best music possible and once the record is worked by the label and the artist, success should follow right along with it. 
Although they made thought-provoking tracks, their subject matter and rhyme patterns were easily relatable and very welcoming to sing along to. They were still young and hungry artists to show what they could create, but around making their second album, something changed and many feel it was the sound entirely. Album 2 released October 18, 1994 and was much more political and had much more elements of black power sprinkled throughout that while the Target demo appreciated, it didn't spark a new chart placing hit song and wasn't an album the label could sell in that climate because of the messages changing from happy, glass half full, bright outlook on the future album 1 contained. This change in direction as artists could have been the results of them changing environment from artists fighting tooth and nail to get on in the music industry that produces a more hungry and hopeful sound on album one to addressing political views not everyone agreed with the second time around. It may have caused a divide between fans and new listeners to quickly part ways because it may have been too reflective of the person they may see in the mirror. The album did receive majority love from hip-hop fans, but it didn't sell like the first did and may have caused trouble with the label and among the three. They disbanded shortly after. Stunt number two, creative differences. The single most dreaded two words that all groups are confronted with at some point. Some groups can work through these if motivated by one thing or the other the need to continue creating, or the money to be had from continuing on together, or playing the game and capitalizing on what was built so far. Shortly after album 2, the group decided to disband in 1995, stating simply creative differences. Butterfly would expand on this later in an interview with AV Club where he says that they were just immature and petty at the time, along with all having the means now to not need each other as maybe they did before so differences would take a lot longer to reconcile. He said at some point they all just gave in and let the inevitable happen. The three went on to do solo projects with and without new artists and it took almost a decade before they would speak again. It's hard to understand how a group this talented that can produce two albums of the caliber theirs were to just up and scream creative differences after such a long time creating and bonding with each other. In my opinion, the real reason is they simply all wanted to see their worth along with their solo abilities as musicians and use creative differences to let fans down easier. Fans were let down and you could tell at their reunion shows and others they've done together. Most of venues are sold out with people who are just happy this group were on stage once more. They were made to create together and fit sonically that it has to be a deeper reason why all of a sudden album 2 was their last. Stunt number 3, not built for the industry. Another huge stunt in the growth of the diggable planets is they came into the music business completely unaware how opposite of who they were it would soon start to become. According to them, they saw hip hop as all about the music. They didn't concern themselves with how many albums it sold because they weren't interested in the pressure of playing the sales game to put a value on their creativity. Butterfly says there was no real pressure to sell when album 2 release because one thing they collectively agreed on was they weren't built to play the industry standard game of who could sell the most records. When it began to be about this, they all kinda just fell back. Ladybug also lost both parents soon after album 2 that crippled the group since she needed time to grieve after such a loss. They said their idea of what the industry would be like was vastly different from what was expected and it disappointed them, leading to lack of effort to make more music. They didn't do music for prominence or commercial success, for them it had to be refreshing and personal, that way when the fans don't appreciate it, the artists could still be at peace. When music became more about economics than quality and happiness, they all collectively decided they had enough. All in all, Diggable Planets were still one of the more creatively different acts of their era and made one of the standout hip-hop songs of all time. 
They fought a battle that's rarely won in the music industry, which was being able to stay focused on the art and not the numbers. A battle they lost because the world just isn't like that. Certainly not the business of music. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, their growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music, and I'm out.